Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, August 28, 2020. It is possible. Now, how many times have we heard that the fair tax is clearly superior to the income tax, but that it will be impossible to get the ruling class and their minions in the swamp to implement it because it would cost them too much money and power? Now, while there is serious opposition to the fair tax from all the people who use the present income payroll tax system to enrich themselves at our expense, these opponents are surprisingly few in number. The American voters are the ones who have the ultimate right to choose how they're taxed, not the ruling class and their minions in the D.C. swamp. Now, the fair tax is certainly not the first movement in this country to be tagged with the impossible label. In July of 1848, 200 women met in Seneca Falls, New York, and passed a resolution declaring, quote, It is the duty of the women of this country to secure to themselves their sacred right to the elective franchise, end of quote. They were met with derision and ridicule and told that they had absolutely no chance to succeed. Now, many believed that their goal was clearly impossible, but the leaders of the women's suffrage movement didn't let the naysayers dissuade them. They persisted, and in time, they exerted enough pressure on President Woodrow Wilson to convince him to press for passage of the 19th Amendment. Now, although it had been voted down six previous times, this time the 19th Amendment was passed by Congress and sent to the states for ratification. Now, to become part of the U.S. Constitution, the newly passed amendment needed the approval of 36 states. 35 states had ratified the amendment when, in August of 1920, it was considered by the state of Tennessee. It passed in the Tennessee Senate, but the Tennessee House of Representatives was deadlocked 48-48. That's when Harry T. Byrne, a 24-year-old state representative, said he received a note from his mother imploring him to change his vote from no to yes. When he did change his vote to yes, the 19th Amendment won ratification by the 36th state and became part of the U.S. Constitution. That amendment states, quote, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation, end of quote. The impossible had been achieved, but it hadn't been easy. In 1898, Utah had become the first state to allow women to serve on juries, but there was much opposition. Now, how does this all relate to the fair tax? Well, the discussion about the time and effort it took to pass the 19th Amendment is instructive because we're working to overturn a firmly entrenched system. Now, while no one can say with a straight face that the income payroll tax system is good for America or even that it works well, we continue to hear that replacing it with something that does work well and would be good for America is an impossible task. Now, it's really amusing to listen to the politicians and bureaucrats try to deflect discussion away from the income payroll tax system's many faults and justify its complexity and inefficiency by claiming that it's fair. Okay, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines fair as marked by impartiality and honesty, free from self-interest, prejudice, or favoritism. Now, the ruling class and their minions in the D.C. swamp have a decidedly different definition. To them, fair means that which gives us the most income and the most power over people's lives. <laughs> and they are clearly using this definition when they say the income payroll tax system is fair. Now, it's no surprise that the ruling class and their minions in the D.C. swamp oppose the fair tax. It fits the dictionary definition of fair, not theirs, and it would make them scramble to find another way to generate the income and power that they so desperately crave. In conclusion, Muhammad Ali said, I figured that if I said it enough, I would convince the world that I really was the greatest. Now, the ruling class and their minions in the D.C. swamp and the media keep trying to tell us that something terrible is actually good for us. However, no matter how many times they repeat it, that doesn't make it the truth. In fact, anyone who really looks at the issue can see just how big a lie that is in fairly short order. 
Now, the lesson for those of us in the fair tax movement is clear. When it feels like we're trying to accomplish the impossible, remember the success of the women's suffrage movement. And also remember these words from Tom Hanks, the actor who played so many great roles. As long as you as an individual can convince yourself that in order to move forward as best you can, you have to be optimistic. You can be described as one of the faithful, one of those people who can say, well, look, something's going to happen. Let's just keep trying and not give up. If you're ready to take a very significant step towards taking control of your government back from a small group of corrupt people and making it possible for all to prosper, please go to fairtax.org, watch the whiteboards under How It Works, and then if you agree, please join us. And then contact your member of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax, the only truly fair tax. <laughs> This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 